are in an absolutely delightful little uh, river in uh, southern Brittany called the River Valaine and we're moored up in a marina at a truly truly beautiful village called La Roche Bernard. It is stunning. It is ridiculously beautiful. We have been stuck on the boat <laughs> for the last three days because it has been raining and it has been really really windy and it's been grey and so to be honest we've just been doing a lot of work but today we are going into town to explore explore explore, explore. like the uh, intrepid explorers that we are and if you just caught a glimpse of my laundry on the boat then I apologize but that's uh, that's liveaboard life for you that's life on a boat isn't it Nick and there it is you might be able to see it in the background We are in the medieval square in the centre of La Roche Bernard, which is stunningly beautiful. It's 14th, 15th century, all this stuff. So these buildings are four, five hundred years old. This little square, according to the legend over there, they guillotined a few people. So they chopped some people's heads off here, um, which is uh, sedition, I think. Sedition and rebelling against the government. So yeah, so we've been here for what, three or four days, watching the rain fall um, and the wind. Kind of like come blow the boat all over the place but now it's calm the front's blown through and as with most of our time in bisco you know you get like a week of rain and then you get some sun and then well a week of rain uh, it's beautiful it is so jaw-droppingly beautiful and it's you know very french you know the coffee here is actually very passable they bring us a little shot of water to wash it down and because i don't have any pastries the the, 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 the madame here said look there's a bakery down the road, go and buy your pastries and eat them while you're sat drinking your coffee, which is very civilised. Mm. That's alright. So yeah, we're pretty pretty happy with it all here. It's very, very sedate. This is a very sedate season. You know, we've had seasons where we've done 6,000 miles. And now, I think the entire season this year is going to be 600. But the, the slower pace suits me much better. I yeah. agree. Nice. So this has been a bit of a funny week actually because um, we got here on Sunday evening, as you may recall from last week's episode, and uh, the weather was really starting to close in. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, the weather was shocking. It was like rainy, grey sky, really windy and um, well fortuitously the marina when Nick went to the Capitanery on Monday morning to say you know we're here they offered us 90 euros for a week which is amazing yes. like that's uh, it's so ridiculously cheap so we're like okay well looks like we're staying here for a week then and uh, it's actually been really lovely so far we've just been kind of chilling and getting a lot of work done and just I don't know enjoying being stuck in the nicest possible way in one place. It's been really good. Have I got, did I have crumbs on my face that whole time? But you you have you have something else to do here, don't you, Nick? Well, we came here because one of my best friends, John, kept his boat here, um, just up the river. Anyway, for various reasons, he bought a boat, another boat, and he wanted me to go and have a look at the electrics yesterday, or the electronics. So yesterday I spent the day poking around in bilges, trying to get engines started, changing batteries. And this morning I've got to go up the mast. I've got to go back to him, he's going to pick me up. I'm going to do a rib, in rig inspection for him and um, change the other two batteries over. So yeah, so I, I love poking around in boats and it's a beautiful little boat, 1971. Uh, yeah, Nicholson 35. the Pickwick Papers. The what now? Chipper Dickens. Beautiful. 1903 these books. 
beautiful leather bound, absolutely stunning. Look at that. Look at I know, that. I know, I know. Hmm. 1903. Okay. I can't get over how pretty this place is. Amazing, isn't it? So gorgeous. Look at that little alleyway down there. Oh, look. Stunning place. Stunning. I think everyone should come here. Yeah, I agree. Everyone. Do you know what um, like era this is? Do you know what century this was built? 15th century. 14th, 15th, 16th century, according to the legend. Gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. oh dear. Well, that's an issue. Yeah, that is an issue. Show everyone what happened. I'm shoot that. <laughs> when you set the ocean blue, it's okay, it's okay. I'll take you away to where the sun shines. So bright, so bright. You can stare at the stars at night, at night. You can tell me anything you like. If ever you have thought that being moored up in what is essentially a massive lake is a peaceful and quiet affair, then uh, this is proof that you'd be wrong. Because that's what I thought. I was like, oh, sweet. We're going to be in a locked river, which means there's no tide or anything here, no current. And so surely it's just going to be like super calm, super peaceful. Um, yeah, not quite. So this is what you can hear basically every single day from i guess about midday until about 10 o'clock at night and what you can't feel is that those waves slam against that hull and you can actually it's not too bad today i have to admit but the last couple of days like you feel it reverberating throughout the entire boat. Anyone who has been on like a uh, tied up to a marina somewhere tidal where you get like that really bad slap, hull slap, knows what I'm talking about. It's not just the noise, it's like you can feel, particularly when you're in bed, like proper like impact of the little waves. You wouldn't think that they would be so, so distracting and so loud, but um, yeah, no, they are. I can actually feel it coming up through my feet right now crazy today nick has gone to um help his friend john with his new boat which is being kept uh at a marina about i don't know three or four miles away i am therefore left on the boat by myself uh, which is a rare moment of peace and quiet for me i have to admit i don't mind it don't tell nick that <laughs> And uh, so I am getting along with doing some work, doing some editing, but also uh, I think that the weather is closing in again tomorrow. So um, I really need to get some more laundry done. done. I must say that normally the workout is a little bit more um, challenging than that. I didn't quite get my sweat on but um, 
that being said, it's actually really distracting to be filming yourself while you're doing a workout. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's all done for today. Now I need to get this laundry out because it, it is, wow, it's four o'clock already and uh, I'm also really worried about the wind situation, particularly with a fitted sheet. So I better get that out, get it drying. Hopefully it doesn't fly overboard. an absolutely horrid day. The weather, I have to say, has not been amazing for the last week. So I'm glad that we were here and able to kind of take advantage of um, the 90 euros a week tariff, which is crazy. That's so inexpensive. But I have to say that, uh, yeah, this weather is not great. Um, it's early July. What is it today? The uh, 7th of July? 6th, 5th, I don't know, early July. And it's just been raining and it's been windy and it's been quite cold. Ooh, I just, that breeze just made its way in here. That was a cold breeze. And uh, you can hear like the slapping on the hull from, I don't know, just, just the wind kind of causing a bit of chop. And um, normally it's okay, but when the wind gets up a little bit higher, it really slams against the hull. I actually had to leave our cabin last night about three o'clock in the morning I, I crawled into the fore cabin to go to bed um, because I just I, it woke me up it was slamming and like reverberating throughout the entire cabin at least you know we've got a lovely cockpit tent that Nick made a couple of years ago uh, you recall in in Charleston um, so that means that our cockpit can you know stay nice and dry if we wanted to we could sit up here although as I said it's still quite chilly you know our boat is gorgeous and warm and, and cozy and uh, I've just been working and uh, editing and just catching up on all of those little chores that pile up when you are sailing all the time. Quite frankly I'm, I'm gonna go back downstairs um, into the dry and into the warmth and um, crack on with my work. Can you hear that slamming? I can actually still hear it even with my headphones on. It's like, I can feel the pounding through the boat. The French do not let anything deter them from going sailing. Literally they will be out in any kind of weather Nick and I are much more fussy. So good afternoon. It's Sunday, Sunday afternoon. And despite the fact we've had really pretty average weather for the last couple of days, the temperature in the boat has gone up about 10 degrees in the last hour. So it's obviously getting warmer. If we have a rainy afternoon, we tend to get on with indoor chores. Today, uh, one of the jobs to do is to redo the edging on the spray hood. It just disappears with UV, UV, UV corrodes it. There's, the umbrella stays fine and uh, everything else kind of goes. So I've got this, uh, it's an inch, one inch binding and I've just taken the old one off. It was rotten as cheesecloth and I'm just redoing it all. So this afternoon for me is sewing. Um, it's a little bit intricate so there'll be a lot of uh, colorful words coming out and um, that's it really. I mean, this spray hood is a bit like Trigger's broom. Uh, for those of you who get the reference to only fours and horses, everything now has been replaced about from the umbrella. All the stitching has been redone. All the zips have been redone. The boat rope, the boat rope has been, the boat, the bolt rope has been redone. The windows, everything, the straps. Um, but you know, you need a good sewing machine to get this sort of stuff done. And the blue, the blue bastard. I hate it, but touch wood, it's not playing up today. So, um, that's it, that's what we're doing now.
said it before and I'll say it again, one of the things I love most about sailing is the very, very colourful characters that you get everywhere. There's always uh, someone interesting nearby when you're in a sailing community. I don't know what these guys are up to. And a tiny boat with no mast, two of them playing bagpipes, as you do. <laughs> but apart from that welcome interruption, I must say it's another relatively unpleasant day. You can probably hear like the banging of the, the uh, chop against the hull. All right, I began. Brilliant. So random. Okay. There's, so I'm going to take some bagpipes, I heard the pipes. Yeah, and they're in like a little tiny sailboat with no mast and they just picked up the boy out the front there and there's four of them on this like miniature like 20 foot boat that looks like it's about to sink. Well they'll probably be playing all night and getting pissed. Like, <laughs> we may actually be leaving tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, I did it again. No. Yep. We've been here for a whole week. It's nice, it's been lovely. I've enjoyed it. Yeah? Yeah, I don't feel like... Well, I think we've done a lot. I mean, you know, our, our lives tend to be fairly formulaic. We, I suppose it's the same as any boat owner. You, 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 you pull up in a port and you fix stuff. And then you fix all the little bits and then when you run out of fixing things, you move on. And there's nothing wrong with the boat. It's not like it's like... Well, you've not actually been fixing our boat. Well, no. I mean, no, I've actually been fixing my friend's boat. So I know I mentioned this before, my friend John bought a boat here and he's five miles away. So that she just been fixing someone else's boat. Which I suppose goes to prove that I like fixing boats. Yeah, exactly. If ever you... Um, oh, I love, I love tinkering around in old boats. And, that, and he, the boat he bought is the same age as me. It's bloody, it's, you know, 1971. Quality year that was a quality, <laughs> quality vintage. <laughs> a good age. <laughs> See what that boat's in better nick than I am. Crying out loud. Anyway, no. So uh, we've had a lovely time actually. La Roche Bernard. I, I, I think we had a very re relaxing week. We had a busy week, but it's busy. been a lovely week. Yeah. We will leave tomorrow. We've got, we have uh, we have fair winds tomorrow, so we're off to Piriac sur Mer. That is our hopefully our next port of entry. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> this is fun. This is brisk. Come on. Come on, girl. Oh. <laughs> what was I just saying? <laughs> I think I'm really too tired up and, and uh... spiked. And then into the Mormion. So zigzagging our way up the Britannic coast. We're not moving. Wow, this is mad. We should have bought like a large scale chart before we came in here and checked all the tides out, but we didn't. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, thanks. We've, we've put a lot of work into this sort of stuff. There's a little button down there. If you click that, you'll see everything we do. There's also a bell. If you click that, then a little bell goes off when we put a new episode out. So, brilliant. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. See you next week. Cheers. Bye. 
A huge thank you to our wonderful patrons for making these videos possible. If you would also like to become a patron, then please click the link in the description below. Our patrons get all sorts of amazing perks and benefits, including early access to our videos, access to Facebook groups and WhatsApp groups, the first to know about any Ruby Rose 2 news, and now we also offer ad-free content to all of our patrons. Click that link in the description below to find out more.